Hey friends, we're learning C-sharp and we're digging into object-oriented programming. Since our last video, we have a person class. Person has first name and last name and birthday. Uh, and then David, you had commented that you wanted these people to have pets. That's right. So now that I know how to do object-oriented programming, I know exactly what to do. Public class cat. All right. String first name, unless you are one of those people that gives your cat like a full first name and a last name. Could be. Right? Yeah. Then we'll say public class dog. And then I'll steal this public property. So our cat will have a first name and a last name. And um, maybe... That seems fine. Maybe it'll make... It'll, it'll bark. Okay. Public so dogs bark. string bark. Is it bark or is it... Okay. Um, and then it will return bark. Okay. Okay. I'm a genius. I'm a That's genius programmer. I'm, I'm cats meow, you watching right? me? <laughs> you watching? Are you experiencing the magic? This and is pretty cats good so far. Do not, they meow? Yep. I feel like someone's watching this and judging me. Definitely. Okay. And meow. There you go. If you want to show us uh, uh, some, some fancy syntax, you can actually, since meow and bark just return strings, okay. you can use the arrow to return, get rid of the, get rid of the um, yep, that's right, get rid of the. So, curly braces let's do yeah let's go there like you go that. meow yep okay so this is cool expression bodied functions so instead of having those functions be bigger we're going to do it a little differently yeah we'll put that in quotes nice. because we know that strings it's have string. quotes all right all right all right so you have a Ship cat it. and a dog this is great those are the only <laughs> kinds of pets people ever have people don't have tigers well, no, I mean, they, they have do, all right? kinds of pets and they all make noise. Right. Uh, and they all, have, they all have names. Now I've got names repeated everywhere. You also would have to declare your person object with a list of cats and dogs and every other object oh, possible crap. for pets, right? right. So, because if I said public list of pets, right. is it cats or what dogs? What is a T, right? I don't know. What do you put there? Yeah, well, I'm going to have to put cats none. Right. That's going to be messy. Right. All right. Well, how are we going to fix that? So one way of, of trying to change this is to introduce a base class or a parent class that is pet. And ah. that should describe the common properties of all pets. Okay. Well, all pets have first names. In our world, it does. In our world. Yep. So then I'll pull one of these up there. And then they all... Uh, they all... They don't they bark, don't bark or meow, but they do make a noise. So we could say, like, make noise. Okay. Make noise. And I'm gonna make put, boys? Make boys, make boisey. <laughs> I'm going to say question marks because I don't know what noise they make right, right. now. Right. So our, our base class pet is the, the model of any pet, right? And all pets in our model have names. Is this like a generic pet? Like it's a, a generic pet. Okay. No names, no actual petness. Oh, so it's the... It's idea the, of a pet. It's the uh, common... It's the least common denominator pet. Exactly. Okay. That's right. So least common denominator pet has a first name and makes some noise. Right. But cool. we can't, we, we don't actually want to implement any behavior. We just want this to be a shape, a model. So, oh, so this pet doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything at all. That's kind of an abstract concept. Though. That's right. It's not, that's an abstraction. That's the word we use to describe concepts that don't have a concrete or specific um, then is this an abstract class or is it just virtually a pet? It's an abstract class. Okay. So I would say public abstract class. It's a right. concept, but there's so, no animal called pet. Exactly. One important thing about having an abstract class is that you can't new one up. You can't create a pet. Yeah, you can't. You have to create a specific kind of pet. Exactly. A okay. cat or a dog. So then why is it mad about make noise? Because make noise, you can't uh, declare any, you aren't declaring any behavior for make noise. There's no body. Mm -hmm. You want to just uh, reserve a slot, essentially, for derived classes to give you an implementation of make noise. Right, because this pet doesn't exist. It can't exist, so it can only think about making noise. But some other pet downstream right. will make noise. So what do I say to that? Let's make this an, an, an abstract method. Okay. So no implementation. It's a pet that can make a noise and it has a name. It's a blueprint. It's a blueprint. I love it. All right, cool. So you've designed what a pet would look like in, in our model. Okay. And now we're going to build two concrete um, implementations of pet, okay. cat and dog. So one of the little tricks here we can do in Visual Studio Code, you see this little chevron on line 17. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click that and I'm going to fold up. That's called nice. code folding. The code's there. See, 17 through 22 just folds up. 
but that's going to make it easier for me to see that cat. So how can cat and, be, and pet be related to each other? So a cat is a pet. Okay. That's important. The is a relationship. It doesn't right? have a pet. It doesn't have a pet. It, it is a pet. Okay, so people have pets and cats are, are pets. pets. Exactly. Okay. So how do I say it is a pet? So the syntax for saying this cat derives from pet or is a pet mm -hmm. is you say colon and then pet. Okay. And then since we're using C sharp 12, you're going to pass in the name from the constructor into, yeah, you got it. Oh, so I take the first name of the pet and I hand pass it, it on to the base. It goes upstream. That's right. Okay. And now it says, hang on, this cat doesn't do make noise. Right. Well, so we, we declared the abstract make noise method. Mm -hmm. And now all derived classes must implement this make noise Okay. Method. So meow now becomes make noise. Right. And then in this and case one more here, step. it's saying, well, hang on, I need to, oh, I'm reading. I'm reading the oh, error. Oh, yeah, message. read the error. Yeah. I'm reading. It says override. It's basically saying, are you overriding? Otherwise, you got to make a new one. You're, you're, you're shadowing it completely. Correct. So I'm going to say public override. So I see that says you have to have a make noise. I don't care what you do, do it. All right, fine. I'll override make noise and I'll do something. Yep. I dig it. All right. So that makes cat really clean. Beautiful. So let me do the exact same thing for dog. So dog derives from pet, passes in first name, goes upstream. I don't need this because nope. I... It comes from our, our comes parent from class, on, our base class. Oh, my goodness. And it also makes noise. It makes different noise. Yep. Override as well. Okay, cool. So now let's give you some cats and me some dogs and then make them do stuff. Nice. That's pretty cool. All right. So up here... So we should, we should decide if we want pets to also be unchangeable. I think you can change pets. Let's expose a list of pets on people. Okay. So if I have a person and persons or people have a, uh, a list of pets, so I'd say list of pet. Right. Before we said list of int and list of this and list. Now we have list of pet. Yep. Pets. Yep. And then I could just say get set. And Let's we make it can get only. You want to say get only? Yep. No one can. Well, you can adopt a pet later. This is true. See, this is the interesting thing, though, because <laughs> we're not going to be able to solve this today. But what, what David is pointing out is that as you get more advanced in your C-sharp experience, the answer to everything is it depends. It depends. Because both what he and I are arguing are absolutely valid. Well, you can have pets. Should you be able to allow people change? Pets can change names. People could be. Why can't they? You have to ask yourself what the business problem is you're trying to solve. Correct. But for the purposes of what we're doing, how do you want to do it? Uh, New feature in C Sharp that I want to show you equals new. Nothing else. Just new. Just new. Empty, empty bracket. So that means, oh, empty bracket. So we're em going to basically friends. get a free empty list of pets. I love it. Yep. Very cool. So everyone has no pets, but it's not um, nothing. I see. Uh, so I don't have to, outside it, make, make pets. Correct. So then I, presumably I should be able to then say p1.pets. Dot add. Dot add new pet. Um, I don't know. My dog is named Dog. But wait a second. I want to make a new pet. I can't make well, a new pet. Well, try it and see what happens. Well, I can't because So it it's... tells you, the squiggles tell you. You can't make an abstract pet because it's a dog. Right. You can't make concepts. You have to make concrete things. I don't, I'm not even very good at creative is names. That, is that your dog? My dog's your name, dog's is, name dog. is Dog. Uh, <laughs> call it Dog. We'll call it Dog. Yeah, that's Fred. good. That's a good name. Dog is Fred. Okay. And then I'll have two dogs. We'll have Fred, you don't want cats? Fred and Barney. No, cats don't like <laughs> Pet 2. Okay, P2 is you. And we're going to say pets.add. And we got the add from yep. list, right? And we're going to say new cat. What is your cat's name? Beyonce. Okay. I like that. Good okay. Cat. All right. Because Beyonce would never talk to you. <laughs> and your cat's never going to talk to you either. Okay, mm. cool. And then I have my list of people. So how would I then list out or dump the list of all the people and dump and maybe query all of this. All their pets. So let's list people and their pets. Sounds okay, good. Let's do it. All right. Let's loop over all of the, well, we can use for each. We yeah, can use a lot of each. different things, right? Yeah. So for each uh, person, for, for each var, I don't need to say person. Yeah. In, uh, where's our list of people? people? It's also each. very common in, in coding in general to use the first letter of the variable you're looping over. Oh, interesting. As the loop variable. So okay. for var for each var p in people is very common. Okay. So then I'll say for each. Well, I'm going to say 
person in people, and then I'm going to say for each pet in person dot pets pets right, and then we'll say you need a var. You need a var. Oh, I need a var. You're var. right. Var pet. Yep. And then just print out pet and print out person. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we'll say, and then let's do our string interpolation. We'll say person dot first name. No, no, no. Just actually print the actual object. Oh, you want to say person? Yep. Print print pet in the inner loop, and then print person Has in the outer a... loop. And I think you're in, you're in the wrong loop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just so you in want me this to be loop, outside here. So yeah. Be so the first here. one just print person. Oh, and then maybe like indent a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's a good idea. So we'll go like this. So I'm spinning through my people, spinning through my pets. I'll add a little yep. space here because we'll make it, and then we'll have pet. But I didn't say pet that first name or any nope, of that stuff. Print it you, out. You, you sure? Yeah. All right, David. I don't know, man. We'll see. Perfect. We're done. Okay. Wait a second. That's it not doesn't great. say David and Scott. <laughs> it doesn't say the name of my cats. What's right. going on? Right. So here? super important when you declare your own object. Um, you know, when, when, we, when we printed strings and numbers, somehow console right lane understood how to turn that into something that made sense. Right. We built whole sentences and said pet dot this and, exactly. and person dot that. So we could unpack those objects and then like print out the various first name, last name, etc. I can do it manually. Or we can override to string, which is something that every object has by default. So anytime you declare a class in C sharp, your class derives from the uber base class object. Object has a virtual, uh -oh, a virtual abstract method called toString, okay. which is used to print that object in things like console right line, string okay. interpolation. So we're going to go to, you let know. Me, let me see if I yeah, can paraphrase ahead. that if you don't mind. So abstract class pet sets me up for success, but it doesn't have an implementation. It doesn't say, I know how pets work. That's You're right. saying that there's some unseen magic class called object object that has an abstract thing called two string that's right and by default it just outputs the name of the type right but we can override it just like we overrode make noise so you're saying i can go public override two string two string you got it okay and then do i have to return a string that looks the way i want yeah and, and can, I use, can use interpolation can i use interpolation yeah we can use our the things um, we learned before then i could say you got the things Just, on the wrong the other side. Oh, I put the oh. thing on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, I want to say dollar sign. Yep. And then I'll say first name. And we'll say last name. So that's what it's going to output now instead of. Get rid of that extra. Do I have an extra on the outside. dealy? Yep. There you go. go. Okay. So I bet you then. And you can print your pet's name. Go too. down here. But I want to print that it's a dog or a cat. You can actually add this to the pet base class. Oh, you, you do want that. Okay. Well, can, can the pet base class ask it what type it is? So it I could can. say, let's say I'm a, I'm a cat. Yep. And I am a, I want to be like, I want to say what I am. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a pet. How can I know what my cat is? So when you, when you create the instance of a pet, a cat or a dog, yep. you can ask it what type it is. So you, in the base class, we can say get type dot name. So you can basically say, what are you right now? Are That's you right. a cat? Are you a dog? So even though this is the abstraction, by the time the concrete or the actual pet gets created, you can get, in, get the type name from the system. OK. So we got a bunch of, cr a bunch of warnings Crazy here. Crazy warnings. Parameter first name is captured, captured into, into the, the state. state. <laughs> da, 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 da. It looks like it worked down here. Yay. Human Scott. Fred and I'm a dog. Barney and I'm a dog. Beyonce and I'm a cat. What are these? These errors come from, from the fact that you are passing in the uh, first name, last name, mm -hmm. setting it on your, um, those properties, yep. first and last. And then in two string, you're using the oh. first name, last name instead of so first and last. I should use first and last. Yeah. Because that's it, it still functions. Oh, I see. It's warning it's me. It's warning you to, to avoid that. Yeah, double I, capture. It's, it's yeah, less efficient. Yeah, I want to use my first name yeah. that everyone else is using. You got it. Very cool. Let's try it again. Look at that. Beautiful. That's pretty cool. Now, of course, my text isn't 
Super nice. It's good like so let's just take a moment here and let's look at our object-oriented application as we end our, end our module here. So we have our console application here. We've got a person. Scott, we didn't do anything with birthday. Yep. We have a person, David Fowler. They have pets. So person has a pet. And you made it a abstract base class of pet. So in, in my person class, doesn't say dogs, doesn't say cats, says only pets. Has a list of pets, right? We overrode two strings, so anytime anyone says console.write line to a person, it says I'm a human and it says it's first and last name. Pets know how to say their names. Ooh, hang on. We should make it call me noise. It didn't, it didn't make noise, dude. Yeah. What let, are you doing? Let, let's do it in two string. What are you doing, David? You may as well do it in two string. Oh, you're right. So I can do it in two string. And I make noise. Now I just say, how do I That's call right. it on this object? That's right. Yep. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And I make noise. Yep. Ooh, is it going to work? Yo. That's pretty cool. That's nice. That's pretty cool. So this is really nice because we're looking at something that shows what's called separation of concerns, and we're avoiding repeating ourselves. That's right. Keeping the code dry. Yep. Don't repeat yourself. That's really nice. So now, any pet, we could have lizards and birds and stuff, and their implementations would be similar to these cats and dogs. Very clean and very simple. You only override the things that are different. You, oh, that's right. a good point. That's good. Right. So we could feed them all the same, or exactly. we could, you know, whatever. Wait. They all have name concepts. We could add birthday and yep. weight and length and all that kind of stuff, and that would be in the abstract class, and they all inherit yep. that stuff. And then we could build on top of this. Here's an exercise for the reader as we end our module. Put these into lists, query them with link, and see what kind of fun you can have. I hope you're having as much fun as we have had teaching you beginning C-sharp. Bye. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs>